Welcome to uh, week five of the Intermural Podcast. I'm Andy Edwards. And I am Spencer Gardner. So uh, we don't want to split the into two podcasts today, so we're going to try and get through the Intermural part, keep you updated in regards to the uh, table, who won what, but more importantly, come on to 18.6, which is going to be a real fantastic workout. Me and Spence have spent this morning trying to devise a suitable test for the whole team. Yeah, there's uh, going to be a new movement in there, so uh, uh, we could take a photo of a random object to give you a clue, which doesn't help you at all, but we won't be doing that, will we, Andy? No, I'll just say pineapple. <laughs> pineapple, Pineapple, yeah. pineapple, That's pineapple I think, is an absolutely great help. <laughs> all right, we'll come on to that, and then uh, we'll f- we've got some good questions, so we'll field all those good questions after the roundup. So, uh, the workout 18.5 was a repeat. Yeah, a repeat, which was uh, obviously chosen by the community. Uh, can't help thinking that a slight influence by Mr. Castro halfway through the uh, voting. I think, what happened there then? Didn't he mention, he, I think it was going towards uh, the overhead squats. The vote was quite heavily going that way. And then they cut to a video of him where he said he loves thrusters. And then suddenly the voting went the other way. Do you think it was like subliminal messaging? I can't help thinking it. Mm. <laughs> you just don't think it was predetermined to be that one? Quite possibly. Facebook yeah. was involved, so you know what they're like with their uh, votes. Yes. So the <laughs> workout uh, was a repeat from 11.6 uh, and 12.5, uh, uh, yeah. which was a seven-minute AMRAP of uh, ascending thrusters and chest bar pull-ups, going three, three, six, six, so on and so forth until the time ran out. I think the top scores in the time were in the twenty in the in the world are in the 24s. 24s, pretty, yeah. Pretty savage. Uh, the top scores in the gym we're in the 21s um so um let's without further ado let's have a look where those points ended up so male rx uh first place was myself uh with 149 second place was tani martinez um man hasn't even got butterfly pull-ups hasn't even got butterfly pull-ups man how epic is that so 135 then uh third place was lee with 129 uh, Spencer came in with one two four, one two six. five, one two six. Sorry, and then I, I haven't got Garbo's numbers in front of me, but I think that was one two four. I think. Yeah, I be- uh, yeah, believe so. Yeah, nice little uh, ding dong with you two all over the last five weeks. Absolutely, but he knows his place. Yeah, yeah, and and I just want to sort of say, I obviously can predict the future because uh, two or three episodes ago, I did tell you that you should enjoy your leave over me for a bit of time, because I'll always pull it back to us. And I like always take your advice, and I did enjoy it. Yes, good. <laughs> uh, so the female RXs, uh, we've got Sam uh, coming in with another first place with a massive 141, I think, or 144. Yeah, one, I haven't got the numbers down in front of me, sorry, so um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not too sure. Then we had Angie and Jenny coming in with 123, Alex with a 110, and I think Gina was just underneath that with um, 106, I'm okay. not too sure. I'll have to double check, so apologies. Uh, but again, this year, well, this, sorry, this not this year, this round, no surprises in the top. Uh, five there against Spence. No, absolutely not. It's the uh, it's the sort of same names every time. Um, but it's it's great to see these repeats. It's probably the most exciting part of the Open because it gives you a chance to compare yourself to um, when you last did it yeah. and other athletes who did it at that point in time as well. My first PB since two thousand and fourteen. Wow, I know. you've had a dry spell. I've had a big dry spell. <laughs> yeah, a bit like uh, oh no, I won't go into it. Don't go on. No, 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 no. It's too much banter. Too early. Uh, so, in the scales division, um, the alternative was to do a jumping chin over the bar pull up. The f- male, Mike Johnson, came in first. Alan O'Doherty in second. So, that's uh, Al's first scoring uh, position for his team. And then James Shaw. And then on the female side, we had Carol Owen coming in with another first place. We had Clara Munford Jones. Uh, co- uh, getting her first score on the board uh, this year. And then we had Jess Williams coming in third then, all right? So how that all affected the points is this week, um, just going through the posts that we put out there, the Cowboys coming in with an impressive 19 points yet again, Spence. Yeah, we're holding that lead, quite comfortable. I think... um... You know, I've got to uh, look at the team we've got, and um, yeah, it's it's because of those consistent people just putting mm-hmm. in those scores mm-hmm. that um, 
just keeps us up there. Yeah. The Vikings are obviously pretty motivated this week. They've come in at the second, uh, joint second place best effort with uh, the Chiefs. But the Vikings... Big effort that was from them. They really, they opened up that yeah. lead over the Pirates. Yeah. Well, they, I think if, if, they, if only that week 2A kind of let them down a little bit, mm. they would have been right, right up there. But... The, uh, they seem to have just gathered momentum through the uh, through the weeks and bonded as a team. Yeah, and definitely secured the wooden spoon for the Pirates. Yeah, unlucky Pirates. Unlucky Pirates. Um, cool. From there, we had the Saints and the Buccaneers coming in with 15 points. Uh, likewise, I think, Spence, the Buccaneers, that second, uh, that burpee score letting them down yep. and letting them drop down the field a little bit more. But it's, it's the classic open position where if there's a hole in your game, whether it be a team or an individual, it's going to find it out. And mm. so consistency is the key. Yeah. And then from there, we had 15-14 was the Titans. I think Tani score bringing up the Titans there. What we found is in the last week, there were a couple extra no-shows, um, whether people are going on holiday and bits and pieces like that. But it was in the sort of the final pieces where it sort of took took hold and uh, has made a difference. Um, but what effectively we've got... We've got our top ten going into week six. Yeah, it's um, you look at where it's all going to end. I think I'm really sorry to say this, and I think the Pirates are going to struggle to uh, sort of get off there. They're eight points adrift. They're going to need something significant Pretty to happen. Epic. Yeah, like if if all the other teams arrive in a bus, which sadly crashes. Pirates might just do it. Might but, just do it. But I think... Hey, um, well, you never know. You know yeah. Persistence is what's needed for this final yeah. one. We'll, Guys, we'll, don't give we'll, up. We'll give you, give you a, a couple of ideas of what might be coming around the corner. But first, let's go through the top ten. All right, in tenth place. It's not even tenth, it's ninth place. Nine. We've only got nine teams. Nine teams. We, uh, in ninth place, the Pirates. In eighth place, the Vikings. In seventh place, we have the Buccaneers. In sixth, the Outlaws. In fifth, the Titans. In fourth, the Cavaliers. And your top three. Third position, we have the Chiefs on 100 points. In second place, or joint second really with the Chiefs, is the Saints with 100 points also. But stretching their lead out by a country mile with 119 points, we have the Cowboys. How was that? Uh, it's okay, but I don't think Radio One would have employed you back in the eighties. No, no. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, um, copyright infringement doesn't yeah, come yeah. to the FRC as well. There, uh, but I thought hopefully you guys would enjoy that little piece. Cool. Eighteen point six. Very. Can I just quickly? Oh, like, yeah, sorry. Just going back on eighteen point five. What was your view on the workout? Because I I've got some scores here from twenty twelve and okay twenty twelve twenty twelve when a few people you might know did this workout. Um, and I just want to sort of run it by you. You've got somebody like, I think it was Dave, little Dave Parry. Sorry, I've got Dave. I'm going to call you little Dave Parry from back in the gardens days when you worked there. You'll always be little Dave. Uh, little Dave Parry, I think he got something like 110 odds okay, around yeah. about there. And he was sort of talking to me saying, oh, is it any good? You know, you know, I could have done better. Well, just to put this in perspective, 2012, you've got Mike Fox, uh, who I believe went to regionals that year. He did, yes, correct. He got 112. Uh, you then got Steve Fawcett. Oh, yeah. Who no, is a Games athlete. Only a second British male ever to go ever to Games. Ever goes to Games. He got 124. Uh, you got Phil Hesketh, who got, believe this or not, Dave Parry, 104. Wow. Another... Games athlete. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, these numbers go to show what CrossFit kind of does, that this sort of um, group training methodology can actually give you such significant gain, mm. gains over a time period, which I don't think you see in any other methodology. Nothing at all. Um, we've actually, it's kind of interesting, this week I've used Wadify to draw some data for um, Rod, who's been interning with us, helping Maddie out with her powerlifting, etc. He's doing his Masters in Strength and Conditioning up in um, Cardiff Met. And fundamentally what I can do on Wadify is that I've pulled throughout the whole of 2017 every PR someone has achieved if they've kept their um, their training log up to date. 
Wow, and what were the numbers? 1,600 PRs over a 12-month period. Holy crap. It's pretty impressive. So whether that's a squat, whether that's um, a task priority worker, i.e. something like a Fran, or whether that's uh, an AMRAP, we can see that on those benchmark workouts and some of the ones that we've repeated, there is improvement. So the, the, the training that we're doing is providing, okay, um, a great level of fitness yeah. and improvement. Yeah, and I think that goes, goes you know, for, for guys who are just starting CrossFit, it's what you'd expect. Yeah. Uh, but for the guys who, you know, look at Andy. He was at the top of his game 2012, I think it was 130. 2014. 2014, you peaked, did you? Okay. Uh, but back in 2012, 136, and then this time you got 140. 49. 49. Yeah. So there's still those gains to be had. Yeah, it's really It's still working, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's a it's great kudos for what we're doing here and hopefully gives everyone sort of that motivation. Keep going. Every year you will get better. Yeah. It's just a fact. Just put in the time, put in the effort. Yeah. And, that, you know, that, you know, it's in terms of when it comes to nutrition and stuff, everyone always wants to sort of look the part. Well, you've got to realise that the people who are building with aesthetics, their nutrition is on point. Yeah. Plus their supplementation and pharmaceutical help can help them out <laughs> also as well. I think there's another podcast there. Eh? Yeah, maybe. maybe <laughs> well, well, maybe some of the questions in later on the year. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, well done to everyone. Well done. Awesome. 18.5 uh, locked in. 18.6. So um, what we've decided to do is just to put it, on on Good Friday, 9.30 a.m. If you can't make it in, don't worry. The rest of your team can rally around and so it's not going to make a massive impact. Yep. Uh, the WOD, we've spent a bit of time forming this morning. The only thing I'm going to give away is that we've got some rowing in there. Yeah. Okay, we've got... A ball. A ball and a, a target. So the war ball did not appear in the CrossFit Open this year, which was a shame. Yeah. So we're bringing it back. Yeah. And then we have a new movement, yeah. which requires two people. Two people hmm. and big hands. Big hands, two barbells. Two barbells. Yeah. And I think that's all we can give yeah, away. That's all it? we can give away. So if you're, um, we will release the workout on where, on, sorry, Friday the 9.30 a.m. class. Even if you're not involved in the intramural, even if you're not in the team, please come along because we will fit you in most yeah. certainly and you will have a great workout regardless. Specifically if you like wobbles and rowing. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You're very advantageous. Sort of standing there as well is quite good. Yeah, yeah. Like Still, standing. like a like a statue. Yeah, yeah. With big hands. Cool. Um, yeah. so after fr- after after oh. this one, we won't be doing intramural podcasts. We'll just be answering questions. Yeah. Um, and maybe I'll be um bringing in some more information in terms of what I'm reading, what uh, sort of podcasts we've listened to, just so that it can help you guys out in terms of getting guests on. Um, you know, we'll start looking within the community first. Um, you know, to so people who've got interest in stories, you know, for me, you know, trying to get Mark George on uh, on the podcast would be great just because of his story in terms of his weight loss, how he's found it's helped him, and, you know, because I've worked closely with him. It'd be great for you guys to listen to also. Yeah, absolutely. And if there's anyone you guys would like to see on here, I'd just say, put a note out. Um, it'd be great if we could have uh, the podcast directed at specific areas that you're interested in. Uh, and we'll then be able to speak about those for a little longer and we might know people uh, in the industry or whatever who we can bring in uh, to discuss and hopefully um, it can be very interesting to you guys. But obviously we're doing this to give you guys information so you're our driving force. Yes. Cool. Questions. Cool. So to keep this concise, what I've decided to do is that I will, I'll just brush past the ones which aren't particularly serious, but um, I'll acknowledge that something was put in there. Um, I did have Dan Forster at the top, but I think he's removed his comment now. What was the comment? Oh, it wasn't particularly nice. Was it? it was what like, what did he say? When, 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 when's, this, when's this podcast going to end? Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. Super oh. motivating from the, from oh, the dear. chat there. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Cheers, Dan. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm oh, It's kidding. explicit now. Oh, it's no. explicit now. You normally do that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, so uh, cool. first first question, Anthony, great contrib- contributor to the podcast, Anthony Kusak. Yeah, um, if the Open Regionals was a target for training, what would your 12 months look like, roughly? When would you try and peak at what, strength, Metcon, etc.? Cool, um, so just taking a lead on that one, over a 12-month plan, uh, realistically, where you want to peak for the Open, you... 
need to just have a good level of CrossFit fitness. Yeah. Um, however, if you want to lift the heavier loads which are involved, you will need to do a structured strength program, I think, at the um, front end of that. So if you imagine from now, April, until, I don't know, September maybe. Yeah. Um, just focusing, some, doing some strength work and just limiting the short, high-intensity uh, metcons and just focusing on some longer, steady duration ones because that will put a nice little baseline balance. Plus, it is also some time to sort of maybe fix um, some niggling injuries or sort of knocks that you've got um, focus on doing things outside the gym just to yeah. keep everything a little bit fresh as well you yeah. know remember in terms of CrossFit the training that we want to provide enables you to go and climb Penavan maybe once a week or go and take part in a triathlon it's there to sort of back everything up when it gets closer to game time that's when we start doing the open style workouts creating that level of intensity um, maybe about eight weeks out I don't think you need to do it much more than there, depending on what level you're going for. Regionals is a completely different story, yeah. um, a different format um, for what you're doing. If you've never been to regionals before, you have to get through the open. In order to get through the open, you need to be fit. Yeah. Regionals is a different game then. It's a very different game. And open, obviously, is individual, and it's generally slightly biased to the slightly gassy awards. As soon as you hit regionals, obviously you're working as a team, and it's always going to be heavier. Well, not necessarily. Uh, yeah, could be an individual. So well. you're training. You're going to have those sessions each week where you're going to get together as a team. Yeah. Um, and you know you're going to be involved in moving a bit more team. Yes, very much so. And that leads on to Gina Fleming's question: Is that in preparation for the regionals, how will um, uh, are the teams training different to what we've currently be doing? Um, it is going to differ. Uh, we haven't trained at all in terms of uh, a team uh, emphasis or even trained for competitive CrossFit One Iota. Um, you know, it's a bit of a shock that we're going, if I'm being honest. Um, and I mean that in the way in which we have not prepared to qualify to go. Um, so what we're going to be doing over the next six weeks uh, will be um, trying to increase training volume um, with training twice a day as much as we can um, I'm trying to maximize the two different sessions and what I mean by that is that we might do some um, steady state or interval training in the mornings and then more towards the evenings we will start to focus more on strict gymnastics and the weightlifting implements implements we'll probably do that for about three weeks and then what we'll do for the following three weeks is that we'll just start to taper up towards the, um, the competition, start to do more team-based um, metabolic conditioning, uh, lifting within a time domain, ascending, lifting ladders, those kind of things, etc. So um, it's going to look a bit different. Um, if you see me and I'm looking a little bit jaded and tired, it means I've probably just done an extra session in the day. Um, so yeah, it should be fairly exciting. It will be open to anyone that wishes to join us. Um, what I would just say with that one is just you will be expected to train at the intensity and we'd be happy for you to sort of join in with that. So we'll keep you posted. If you can make it in for a rowing session or something like that, more than welcome. Awesome. Cool. Um, Sam, I'm not too sure of the Berlin plans yet, but it'd be awesome if you could make it out there. Uh, Jen Johnson, um, can you quickly confirm the closure to the open workout Friday? So... We'll be doing the workout. The Cowboys will be um, crown champions. Um, the Pirates will be crowned wooden spoon winners. Yeah. yeah winner, wooden All winners. Spoon, everyone's a you winner, baby. Yeah. Um, and then it's entirely up to you. Um, we'll provide some beer. We'll provide a little bit of coffee. If people want to bring in some cakes, bring in some cakes. Um, could even have some Easter eggs with this Good Friday maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly happy with it. Uh, that will be from 9.30 to 10.30, and then at 10.30, we've got an individual award for those people who aren't taking part or just want to work out on their own, which is completely cool as well. All good on that one? Cool. Seb, I'm in for spectating, of course. When is it? The regionals are May 18th to 20th in Berlin. Sally Collins, do they have beer tents at regionals? Yes, they do. The finest German beer that you can have. <laughs> Lee Duans, training after the open, um, i.e. resetting the body, dealing with niggling injuries, etc. So it's a great question by Coach Lee. What next? What next for us as a as a as a gym for our daily wad? What are we looking to do? 
Um, you would have seen that um, Mark is taking hold of the training for the next six weeks, probably the next 12 weeks. We like to do a, a three-month block. And you've immediately seen that we've got some more strength training in there. And we're also using eccentric loading at the front part of this to build some structure. And what do I mean by building some structures? Look, look we're not forcing you to lift heavy loads. We need to build a, a base level of good movement patterns first. A more eccentric training, lowering under load, or stre sorry, it's lengthening the muscles under load. It's almost like barbell stretching. I sort of find it. it the weights we're going to be using are going to be significantly lower than what you would normally use for today. I'm just going to use squat as an example, or traditionally for a squat. So what that allows you to do in is create good movement uh, through the full range of motion of the joint. Also, um, you'll notice that we're going to put some more core work in, some more isometric work. So isometric is where we hold positions to build some universal strength in those weak point areas. So on Wednesday, we had kettlebell floor press for upper body pressing, safe on the shoulders because it's a floor press. Then we also had um, a pillar hold or a plank hold, developing that core stability. And then we also had a ring hold. So again, what we find is, is that people's ability to pull themselves close to a load isn't as strong as it what needs to be. Generally, people's backs aren't strong enough. Yeah, okay? And I mean that's that global, not necessarily bending, but also your ability to pull yourself over an object. So we want to spend some time doing that. What that means to you guys at the end of the day is less injuries, all right, if you, if you are sort of inclined to do that, but more well-rounded fitness, but also a better quality muscle. Better quality muscle burns more calories, burn more calories, what happens? You get ripped. You get ripped, <laughs> yeah, okay, effectively. But again, ultimately. Yeah, ultimately. But again, what we've structured it is in terms of Monday, we'll be focusing on the squat, Wednesday we'll be focusing on upper body, and then our... On the, on the Fridays now we'll be looking at pulling from the floor okay if you can't get in uh, to do one of those sessions but are keen to do so we are posting the workouts up in the uh, on, the, on the, um, the Facebook group so just take a glimpse of it ask the coach what they're looking for and then crack on with it okay cool uh, can you build mental strength if so Jamie Moffat's question um, you can but it's really hard um, you learn by the margins of your experience. So what do yeah. I mean is, is that um, if you take a tattoo, for example, I've never had a tattoo, Spencer. You got any tattoos? Yeah. No. Yeah. But what I've been told is, is that it just the pain becomes numbed over a, a good yeah. number of time, and it's a bit like that in training. Like if we talk about your example, a million warbles, I wouldn't like to do a million. Well, that's a good charity event. What do you reckon? One million. One million warbles. Yeah. Maybe yeah. a week. What charity is worth a million warbles? Well, you can work this out. So, how long will that take you? It'll take you at least it's two seconds per wall ball. Assuming no rest. Yeah, but so if you did no rest, team, the ball can never stop. Okay. So, so imagine the ball can never stop. We're, we're going to do the math. We'll do the math. So you'll take, take that's going to take two, so million two million seconds. Two million seconds divided by sixty will give you the minutes. Divided by sixty equals Thirty-three divided by sixty will give you the hours. Yeah. Divided by twenty-four will give you the days. So it'll take, you, take us 23 days and about 10 hours yep. to, no, no, it's not, it's, a, it's one of 24, so that'll be two hours, two and a half let's hours. Let's call it 24 days. Let's, yeah. let's call it just, no, 23 days, so it's only two and a half hours. Okay. So yeah, but it, I think, you know, all the prep. Yeah, yeah. This, so it'll take us 24 days yeah. to do one so, million war balls. Yeah. That's pretty epic. That's month. pretty epic. Epic. Yeah. I think you'd need a team of possibly like 12, 10 doing shifts. Doing shifts so you get some rest. No, you need a bigger team than that. Do you think so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just to say, I don't want to be part of this team. If you're putting a team together, no. don't contact me. You'd have some massive legs at the end of it, though. Oh, Maybe. God. Yes. Wow. But anyway, <laughs> building the mental strength. Um, learning, pushing through your margins of experience. Do um, it more. Yeah, so you, you have to do to shit that hurts more, more often. So the more times you put your body in that position, the more often it's going to realise, oh shit, I'm not going to die. Because that's the only thing stopping you Correct. most of the time is uh, your body saying... Fear. Fear. Adri fight or flight. Fight or flight. So put, put aside the, the concept, say you had a bad day in work, you've got something in your mind. If you're totally focused on doing that event, 
you'll get to a certain level. You do that again in the same conditions, you'll go further because your body knows it's going to survive. Yeah, yeah. So how do you build that mental strength? Put yourself in that cave as often as you can. Yeah. And that's where it falls in with CrossFit. You know, we're trying to do constantly varied functional movements performed at high intensity. So we're always pushing those margins of experience. Okay. You'll notice by the... Um, the way we program, some days you'll come in, you'll work at a high intensity for like three to five minutes, some days it'll be 20 minutes. Naturally, that intensity to, on your body or that stress in your body is slightly different. Um, you know, you wouldn't necessarily try and sprint 20 minutes compared to like a three minute one. So that's how it sort of all balances out. I hope that answers your question, Jamie. Hannah Collard, nutrition question. Oh, this is great. Uh, the meals I eat are relatively clean. Okay, I'm just my caveat to that is what does relatively clean look like? Yeah, you know, uh, relative means it's relative to something else. What is that? Yeah, like super clean. Yeah, yeah, relatively clean. Um, but I can't stop craving sugar, which is leading me to overeat. Do you have any tips on how to stop these cravings that I can do after Easter? Yes, obviously, with the Easter eggs, ready for the summer uh, as well as improve my tra training. Okay, so th the sugar cravings, they're going to happen. Um, at first, it's all going to be about willpower. What I would re and try and understand is what this relatively clean look like. If you've got a fair level of carbohydrates in there, that's still going to cause a fairly significant insulin spike if it's not a good, you don't respond well to uh, that type of um, carbohydrate. And you're probably under eating a little bit if you're craving sugar. Like, no, it's not getting. I don't want to sort of be one of those sugar, um, sugar Nazis, okay, etc. But it, it's not the best thing since sliced bread, specifically. Uh, well, oh, sliced bread. Oh, sliced bread. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so it depends on what you show. Is it the sweet? Of it? Is it sweetness, um, or is it satiation that you're craving? We are trying to have to understand, establish one of those two things, but. If you want to shed fat, you need to be in a calorie deficit. And yep. if you're going to be in a calorie deficit, there's going to be points where you're going to be hungry. And so you just have to have the, the, the willpower to sustain from eating a sugary food. Yeah, the other thing I would say is, um, I, I most certainly get this all the time. I'll go home and I absolutely crave sugar. But the beauty is I don't have any sugar in my house. So where are you getting the sugar from? When are you buying it? Is it you're walking past the shop and you buy it? I doubt it is. You're buying it probably in a supermarket and it's almost premeditated. Yeah. So don't have the sugar in your house. Have a load of almonds. I find I dig into my nuts. So <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yeah, there we go. And uh, I'll have a load of almonds and then that'll actually suppress my desire to have something really sugary um, in my house. Yeah, well, but what you've got to realise, Spence, is that you are quite lean. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So you're one of these people. You don't want to overindulge on nuts. Like, okay. if you want to be in good nick, there's two ways of doing it, right? You have to calorie control, which allows you a little bit more leniency on the foods. It's less restrictive if you calorie control. Yeah. However, if you're not one of those people that likes to weigh and measure, you have to go paleo. That's my that's my advice, right? And it's not like paleo desserts. It's not like you know paleo brownies and that crap. It's like no. You eat whole foods, yeah. you eat whole nuts, there's no nut butters, there's those yeah. kind of things. But you can generally get away with eating it to a, quite a significant amount. Grazing, don't graze. Snacking, don't snack. Eat big meals three times a day in a time-restricted window. Yeah. So maybe between the hours of like, um, I don't know, fast in the morning and then eat between 12 and 8 in the day. Yeah. You can't go wrong. Do, do you also agree, Anne, that the less sugar you have, the less you crave it as well? Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So yeah. initially, this might be a fact of you've just got to, you've just got to be, have strong willpower. Yeah. yeah. You know, the easiest thing we can do is just give in to it and have it. You know, how much do you mm -hmm. want it? Um, just don't have it. Don't yeah. Definitely, definitely don't have it in your house. Um, and then just have the willpower. Yeah, and this is the thing is that with, when it comes to nutrition and dieting, I take two approaches depending on the people that I'm working with, okay? So if I'm working with someone who has set out to do a goal and has told me what they want to do, I'm fairly tougher on them, okay, compared to someone who's eating for health, Yeah. okay? Um, and the reason being is, is that the only person that controls what's going into your mouth is, is you. It? Absolutely. Okay? Um, and when um, I want to give people the power 
to do something, I'm not going to... I want them to work towards it. So if you take a, a cheat meal as an example, the way I've sort of come up in my head, you have to show me 100% compliance over a given period of time. I would yeah. generally say about two weeks. That's 100% of eating clean. Yeah. Right? No crap, no processed stuff. Give God give me 100%. I will then allow you 90% compliance. So what that means, if you imagine over 21 meals, three meals a day, yeah. all right, okay, it will allow you two cheat meals in a week. Yeah. But the rest of it has to be compliant. And then, after that, that amount of time, let's say that's another four weeks, we can then move to 80-20. Right? And 80-20 is a flexible, I would say, is probably a bit more of a flexible diet. You're comfortable then, aren't you? Yeah. You should be able to be able to... Uh... So you've gone through the process of developing willpower and developing the need and the understanding of the relationship with food problem is is that people are always trying to shortcut diets before they've even started yeah and there isn't a shortcut there isn't unfortunately it's really hard work you gotta have that right mental attitude to enter into that change of your nutrition to get to it and then, like you say there is not that easy way there's no. not an easy fix i think going forward we'll probably do a nutrition separate one Okay, so it's a podcast, or we'll just do like a particular week, we'll do a, a, a one on nutrition because yeah. we can go down rabbit holes all day on this one. Okay, cool. Jamie Hopkins, training in 20s versus 30s versus 40s, etc. How does training, tra training change with age, if at all? Is it just a case of taking longer to recover? Um, you sort of answered your own question there is that as you do get older, recovery rates do increase, uh, sorry, do decrease. Um, so it does take longer to recover from uh, tough training sessions, but it doesn't mean that you can't train hard. Um, in your 20s, the best way to look at it is that you can literally crush yourself yeah. and you'll be fine. You'll bounce back. You'll bounce back pretty pretty well. Um, I would say early 20s as well. Yeah. So as you get a little bit older, sort of like 28, 29, um, as a male, you need to start considering the training that you do. And as a female, okay, you um, can still push it pretty hard. Um, and in fact, as you get older as a female, you develop more muscle mass, okay, more quality muscle mass, you can actually start to push it. I mean, like Sam Briggs is a good testament to that. Yeah. And if you ever look at the CrossFit Games athletes, there's no, like, someone jumping in at, like, 17 years of age into the women's category. They're all pretty um, experienced in terms of the training background that they've got. Well, your the endurance will increase, isn't it? Correct, yeah. So you're... No, so, your endurance doesn't naturally increase yeah. your potent was it your um, your uh, potent uh, oh, right. yeah but your ability to actually develop cardiovascular yeah. endurance increases right so you still have to train you don't just like turn forty and can go out oh, and run a I'm marathon fitter. <laughs> I'm fitter already um, so you'll have to you have a more propens propen propensity that's it propensity oh, wow. there we are I'm trying yeah. to use the, the dictionary here uh, to come into here um, in your thirties it's just finding out what works for you okay high, like high intensity training a lot doesn't work you can still get strong as an ox and in your 40s you can get, still get strong as an ox as well yeah. but it's a bit more of a balance you have to maybe only have maybe one or two focus days within yeah. a week um, and i would probably say you want to be maxing out less um, and focusing more on accumulation bodybuilding type yeah, I'd, I'd also say it depends how you're approaching it. So if there was um, a 40, 50-year-old coming in to train CrossFit for the first time and there's somebody who's been doing CrossFit for 10, 15 years or functional mm. fitness or whatever and they're coming through, they're going to be two very different yeah. uh, people. Yeah. So the person who just comes straight in, uh, 40, 50 years old, probably lack mobility, etc. The guy who's been doing it for 15, 20 years coming through has maintained that mobility uh, and can continue with that strength training and probably won't have as big a changes to his body as he's getting older than the person yeah. who's just come in and freaking trying to hit it hard. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, I think that's part of the... Mm, part of the... I don't want to say part of the issue, but sometimes people come to the gym and they just see CrossFit as a class, and if you look at it like that, you're never going to fully get the best out of it. It has to be a long-term process. There's no quick fix. Anyone that get, promises a quick fix in the fitness and nutrition uh, space is full of shit, um, and they probably pop up in your Facebook feeds all the time. But I, I you know, the, I'm here to tell you that it's it's not easy. Um, our environment doesn't allow for us to, you know, look after ourselves. 
Um, that can that can be on a, again another 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 podcast, but it sort of leads into Jenny Banks's question in terms of how do you stay training uh, training? I'm going to say separate the training and competing at a high level over many years. The fact that you guys come into the, uh, uh, the into Dragon shows you have got a high level of training. And what do I mean by high level of training? If we were just take a straw poll of fifty people out in the centre of Cardiff, you'd be one percent. Yep. You'd be 1% of that population that look after themselves, look after their training. And the reason why you're doing it, it you know, it always starts off with aesthetics. Yep. Always first starts off with aesthetics. But then when you start to realise, as we said, I'm certain my age now, um, is that I just want to be a bit kick-ass when I'm like 50, 60. Precisely. You know, um, I want to be able to sort of compete, still do that or still like... Not beat young kiddies, but like kick it with the kiddies. You know but it I mean? is, isn't it? It's like, I, I most certainly... I'm 41 this year, and I love the fact that I'm, I mean, want to compete with the guys who are 20, 30, mm. and give it a good go. Mm. And that motivation is is huge. And like you say, you turn up wanting the aesthetics, but if you just push yourself and just mm. get healthy, the aesthetics come yeah. part of it, don't they? And the thing is, is that you know you can compete. And what I mean by that is that, as Spencer's quite rightly said, I mean, he, you know, he's 41. I wouldn't necessarily. I, I've ne- when when I even found out his age five years ago, I was like literally fell off the edge of my table, my table chair, um, fell off the edge of the table. At- <laughs> stop sitting on the table. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> At least I'm not sitting on the fence. Eh? There we are. Um, but um, where I'm coming, where I'm coming with this is, you've just got to start listening to your body, and where you've got to start looking after yourselves, right? You've got to have lifestyle hygiene. And when I mean hygiene, I'm not talking about keeping yourself clean and stuff like that. I'm talking about doing the things which are needed in order for your body to recover and for you to sort of go through pain-free. So there's stuff like, look, sort your sleep out, sort your nutrition out, you know? Your training just enhances those two factors because you cannot live without... Good food and good sleep, yeah? So if you don't have either one of those, then training is just really, it's an uphill battle, really. You are, and you're, you're going to be battering your body and something's well, going to you're, give. You're putting it under more stress. Yeah. So if you think about it, if you eat processed crap, your body is stressed. Yeah. If you have a lack of sleep, you're under even more stress. So if you are going to train on top of that, yeah. you're just going to overstress the body. Yeah. You know, it's almost like I've got a glass here I fill it up with water, which is which is my poor nutrition. Yeah. Okay, that's the stress. I then put the lack of sleep in, all right, and then I put the training on top of it. And what happens is that the liquid overfills the the cup. Yeah. And that you can only see it happen for a certain amount of time before it breaks. Yeah. You know, so that's the way I want you to look at it. Um. So, those are the questions. Yeah. Um. How are we going to wrap this up next week? What we're going to do is we're going to be we're going to pick a. A content, a, yeah, a subject, a subject, a subject matter. We're going to just chat about it. And if you've got any qu- additional questions you want us to ask, or what I would suggest now is that I'm going to put out an early request of what you want us to talk about, and we'll go down one rabbit, rabbit hole. hole. Yeah, and we'll try and spend about thirty minutes on that rabbit hole, so it's concise. Whether it's training, whether it's lifestyle based, yeah. nutrition, and even nutrition can go down rabbit holes. You know, you might want to know. What our view is on veganism, yeah, dairy, or hundred yeah. percent carnivore, yeah, just whatever it is, we can yap on about it. And I have no knowledge, obviously, but Andy's very knowledgeable, so <laughs> he most certainly can give you some good, solid information. Try, yeah, try. Give us try. some ideas, guys. We we want to put out uh, content that you find interesting and answer your questions on uh, interesting. Um, uh, matters about health and fitness and uh, very quickly um, we I am holding a clinic on um, the 7th of April which is a Saturday what time man? is 2 that 2pm 2pm yeah on the uh, 7th of April yeah which is a Saturday it's a back clinic so I'm going to be opening it up to 10 people free spots but once those 10 people are in that's it it's going to be a 2 hour clinic Looking at and assessing um, anyone who's got back issues, why that is. Okay, I'm not. I've got an MRI machine, but I'm just going to look at the way you move and try and understand that what's causing that. And we're going to try and give you exercises, which are going to over the time, not no quick fixes in this game. Okay, will help exacerbate some of that 
So you say that's a mm. seminar. Let's I just make this clear. Is it's more of a workshop clinic? So you're going to yeah. see these guys move. I'm going to see them move. I'm going to well, I'm going to explain why 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 there is dysfunction. Yeah. First and foremost, well then I'm going to watch them move. I want them to understand the way they move. Yeah. By using everyone as different examples, so we can start to see where bits and pieces break down, okay. where functional range is. And then we're going to start talking about how to um, address those situations. So if the if there's guys out there with back issues, or if they have niggles, or if they feel they're not moving correctly, this is open to all those guys out there. Hundred percent, yeah. Awesome. Uh, and the re one of the part of the reasons that we've uh, done this is because we've had noticed in more of the senior population. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That the people are starting to pick bits and pieces up. Yeah. Okay. And. I, I'm, I'm one of these people is that training is not the reason for it happening. The other 23 hours in the day yeah. contribute that to it significantly more. Plus the 10 to 15 years you've been living your life contribute to something. All the training does is highlight the weakest area and the body just doesn't like to react to it. In a particular yeah. way, and I know that for myself. I put myself through the mill, and I found out what works for me to keep um, just to stay strong, basically. Yeah. And then I've used that with a couple of clients that we have here at Dragon to great effect. And I think likewise, Spence, you found out, you know, what exacerbates. Yeah, um, and I like I, I found out the hard way. I, yeah. I did my back. You you ignore it. You ignore it. And it it is as important as your nutrition. If you're not moving correctly, if there's an issue with the way you move, if you're sitting down all day, it is your responsibility to get yourself moving right. Correct. Don't blame another factor when you do your back in. That's something you guys have got control of. And I think this workshop, seminar, whatever you want to call it, is a great way of you just looking at it and uh, you know fixing it. Yeah, 100%. So I will post that. I will give a... Um... I'll, I'll make a po I'll do a pre post post. So the pre post post will be um, I'm going to be posting in the Facebook group wow. on this time and this date, and then once it's active, I will then um, look to get the emails in, and it'll be first come first served ten emails. Awesome. All right. So uh, that's. Um, do you want to email us that Facebook Messenger you or no 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 it would be through uh, info at dragoncrossfit.com info at dragoncrossfit.com. So it's a bit like. Regist registering for um, Glastonbury. Glastonbury, yeah. yeah. So I want to create a little bit of excitement there. Yeah. Get you all by your computers ready to go. Yeah. Awesome. It, will, it will be at uh, like a normal time, like say seven p.m. I mean, oh no, I don't mm. know. I have to. I have to discuss the time. Yeah. Suggest them times, gang, that everyone can get access to their phone or computer. That's probably the best bet. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye.